Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk a little bit about giant snakes and with me is a snake who should be giant but not so much and that's Fiero and we've heard the backstory about him. Um, if not, basically he was a product of very bad breeding, uh, refused to eat anything other than live, even then he wouldn't eat it a lot and he's really only just now started to eat uh, pre-kill uh, and even now he's not going to get very big, he's six. So, but anyway, I want to talk a little bit about giant snakes and if giant snakes, if giant snakes, if giant snakes do make good pets and things to kind of keep in mind if you've decided, okay, I want to go ahead, I want to get a really big snake as a pet. So, first and foremost, do giant snakes, retics, boa constrictors, although I guess they're technically classified as giant snakes because they can get up to 10 feet, very rarely. Um, you know, Burmese pythons, scrub pythons, and even some very large uh, colubrids like indigos, kribos, and king rats are, I would consider, you know, kind of the more giant snakes. Um, although there's definitely a difference between the big colubrids and the big pythons and boas. And so what the answer to that is, absolutely, they can be incredible pets. I love them to death. They all have such great personalities. And some of them, like the indigos and kribos and retics, are so intelligent. They're absolutely highly, highly intelligent. And I don't know where you're going, Fiero. I think, oh, no, he's going down my back, Never mind. But they can make wonderful, wonderful reptile pets. They're great animals. I love them to death. Fiero here is awesome, although I don't exactly know where he's going, but that's fine. But there's a couple things to kind of keep in mind when you decide, okay, this is what I want to get when, you know, you want to go ahead, you've done some research, you've done your research, that's kind of the first and foremost that we're actually, I'm just going to get right into it because that's the first one. Do your research about the individual animal. So these guys are snakes. They are technically wild animals. You can never have a truly domesticated one, but you can certainly, well, you are just going down my back, Fiero. You can never have a truly domesticated snake, but you can certainly have a very habituated and personable snake. So do your research about that. If you want to get a retic, a Burmese python, um, if you don't want to quite get into like, you know, the big, big ones, um, the big three, retics, sperms, and anacondas, but you want to still get a larger snake, certainly larger than like a ball python or king snake. So like a, a boa constrictor or maybe something like a large carpet python. Well, those are kind of more like medium sized ones because they're not quite as heavy bodied. But, you know, that you need to do your research about the species. How big do they, can they get? How big do they normally get? What's up, buddy? You know, where do they live? Their temps, humidity, all the things that I talk about in other videos about them being, okay, you're a little tight, bud, um, about them being, you know, large snakes and what their husbandry needs are. After that, and once you've done your research and you've found a breeder who you think you can get one notably from, um, you're a little tight, but I'm just going to take you off my around my neck. I'm sorry, buddy. Whoop. There we go. Come on. Ugh. Thank you, Fiero, you butt. And he's not trying to choke me, everybody. He's just a little tight while I'm sitting here trying to talk to you guys. And I already have hard enough time not stuttering constantly anyway. So once you've, you know, done your research, you've found somebody that, you know, you think you want to get an animal from is, okay, with any animal, you need somewhere to, you know, kind of hold on to it, where it's going to be. Are you prepared for a giant enclosure, regardless of what it is? A berm or a retic, even without being power fed, can achieve six feet in their first year. Doesn't happen often, but they can. So what that means is that you're having a little baby snake that you're keeping in a little tub. I would not recommend a glass aquarium for any of these, you know, tropical species. But you have in a small tub that moves to a 41 quart tub, to a Christmas tree tub, to a 4x2 enclosure, to a 6 foot enclosure. That that could happen in the first, you know, 18 months to 2 years that you have an animal. All of those can be expensive. And so are you, you know, you just need to be aware of how big of an enclosure eventually when you're going to need to have an eight foot enclosure for some of these big ones. And that's something that, you know, you need to think about. And so with that kind of ties into the cost of things, keeping reptiles, isn't necessarily very expensive, but with these guys, it kind of is because of everything that comes with them having just such a large animal. The enclosure is very expensive. And so you need to make sure that you're holding on to that. The heat isn't necessarily expensive. 
um, per, and there's multiple ways you can heat the enclosure, but they eventually are going to need expensive food. Rabbits don't cost, uh, they, they're not, they're not cheap. They're, they, they cost a pretty penny. Um, and so when you have a anaconda or a berm or a retic, not like this wonky boy here, but if you have a full grown 15 foot long snake and they're eating 10 pound rabbits, I'm just throwing out her numbers with you guys. It all depends on the size and girth and the age of the animal and what you're doing with it. If a 15 pound rabbit. So don't, don't hate on me about those numbers. I'm just throwing out numbers. Um, you know, that's your butt. Okay. I thought that was your face. Um, you know, that all costs a lot. And so that's something you kind of have to keep in mind while, you know, you can pick up a normal Burmese Python for $200. You're going to spend a lot more than that on their enclosure for proper size and everything you need to hold on to them as well as their food bill is going to be kind of costing a lot too. The next thing that you need to kind of think about is it's kind of a lot of work. They, if you guys saw my video on uh, when I went to visit wildfire retics, these guys are big animals and they're nothing but muscle. And when one and bleh, 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 when they want to move, they kind of move. And so you kind of need to be, you know, in shape to hold on to them to, you know, kind of it's the I think I think Brian Barcheck called it too. It's like his uh, retic aerobics or whatever it is. It's his workout. That's how he gets his cardio is just by running with the big snakes. And that's all I'm going to say because I know there's mixed feelings about him or whatever that may be. But it is kind of true. These guys like, specifically like the retakes, they like to run. And the boas, they like to kind of climb. Um, where are you going, buddy? There, here's your face. There we go. See, he's just all over the place. Hi, derby boy. And also in that, when I say it's a lot of work, that also means upkeep and husbandry is kind of a lot of work too. So if you guys have smaller snakes, because I would probably recommend 99 out of 100 times that you should probably get a smaller snake before getting a Burma or retic. A boa can be a good first time pet and I'll actually bring out in just a second um, what I would actually recommend as one of my first choices as a larger first time snake. Um, you have a little bit of experience with these guys but if you have that you know that kind of cleaning them isn't necessarily hard but you know, they're living, breathing animals. That means they eat and poop. And when you have a snake that weighs over 100 pounds and is over 11 feet long, those poops are big and they are gross. And you need to stay on top of that so that way their enclosures stay clean and they don't develop health or respiratory issues. So this is Lily. She is our adult female Dumeril's boa. So while she's not one of, you know, the big three, and I'm going to keep calling it that, you know, the burn retic anaconda, but she is a fairly hefty snake, and she is what a lot of people would consider a giant snake. For anybody just keeping them for a while, you're probably going, uh, no, Jay-Z, you're an idiot. But, you know, they, this is a pretty good sized animal for a lot of people, or especially, you know, if they're dealing with corn snakes, king snakes, or garters, or something like that, or even ball pythons, who can get pretty girthy, but, you know, they don't, they're not this. Um, and this is an animal I would definitely recommend as a first, like, if you are going to say, you know what, I want to have a big snake, I've done my research, I know I can handle this, I've talked to people, I've handled them in reptile stores, this is a snake I would say, you know what, a Dumeril's ground boa or even uh, a boa imperator or a boa constrictor would be a good first time uh, reptile, first time snake if you want a giant snake. Just remember that it's a little bit more intensive when it comes to care and everything like that than versus like a ball python or like a brooks king snake or something like that so this last one is kind of a bit of a two-parter and that is that you need to remember kind of safety in general so as i said at the beginning of this video you know you can't have a truly domesticated snake but you can certainly have very personable and habituated ones so this is lily you know i didn't have her for a number of years while well, you know things were gone but we recently got her back and you know she immediately was just oh okay this again all right cool we're just gonna hang out we're gonna have people around right, okay that's cool I'm totally fine and that's just something that happened between you know handling them and just their individual personalities and overall you know, kind of species temperament and you know it's there are some animals that can be pretty cage aggressive you know a male retake while trying to breed is not an animal i would recommend for most people that even people who know and uh know about snakes and can handle larger snakes is not really an animal that i really want to mess with at all to be completely honest with you 
But when you think about safety, so I used to have a rule uh, before we learned that we couldn't have large constrictors uh, in the city that we're in, which is uh, no snake over 10 feet by yourself. And that's not to say that we ever had an incident where we were concerned that it would happen, just as a bit of a safety precaution in general, which is something you kind of have to think about with large snakes. Never once had an incident where I ever felt, um, you know, unsafe with working with an animal, even when I was alone. But I thought it was a very good uh, precaution that even if we were to move or have a separate facility where I can keep larger snakes, because I absolutely love retics and berms. I would love to have more than just Fiero uh, for a Burmese python, but it's not going to happen where we currently live. Um, that's just something that I decided that I think should happen in general. And so I always have just, you know, a second pair of hands, even just helping move the animal around. Because like I said, when they want to go, they will go. And so I talked about the second part a little bit just a second ago, and that is make sure that you're aware of local laws. So exotic laws in general are very tricky. They, none of them are super concrete. There are a lot of individual federal, state, local law enforcement and ordinances that all kind of, you know, kind of trump each other depending on when that, you know, need suits them best. So anyway, just to kind of wrap things up, if you're keeping, you know, if you decide you want to have a giant snake as a pet because they absolutely can make wonderful reptile pets. First one and foremost, make sure you know what you're getting into. How big is it going to get? Things like that. Next, you know, be prepared, multiple enclosures. It's gonna cost a lot between feeding, housing, cleaning products, everything like that. It's a bit of an investment, but they can be absolutely amazing, rewarding animals. After that, you know, you wanna make sure that all safety precautions are being taken for both the animal and you. So hopefully you got something from this, gave you something to think about. Um, once again, I know that, you know, boa constrictors and doomerals bows aren't necessarily giant snakes, but there's some pretty, you know, hefty animals, especially the doomerals boa, you know, they're pretty, uh, pretty hefty. They don't get 10 feet long like some boa constrictors uh, from some certain localities like Peruvians and stuff, but they're still pretty big, big animals and, you know, they can make absolutely wonderful pets. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you can. The bell notification lets you know that I exist. Helps you helps let YouTube know that I exist. Um, if you have any questions, jzsreptiles at gmail.com. Um, questions about merch, anything like that, future videos, let me know down in the comments. Hit me up. Hope you're having a great day, and we'll catch you next time.